Welcome to the week 12. In this week, as we mentioned in the preview, we will cover the principal component analysis. In this chapter, we will cover the rank reduction and the principal component analysis and how to find the principal component and the PCA and covariance matrix and the PCA and the linear regression. Uh, the, the, uh, you, you will see uh, why we have learned the previous four chapters, uh, including linear algebra and calculus and statistics, particularly singular value decomposition uh, in uh, chapter two is heavily used uh, in this principal conference analysis and statistics is also uh, used uh, in this uh, chapter. This uh, actually the reason that we have learned uh, the earlier four chapters are to study uh, this principal component analysis and uh, artificial neural network. Okay, now we're going to start the se uh, first section, uh, dimension reduction. The lecture note of week 12 can be found on here. So you, and also you will be able to practice uh, the older, uh, the datas and code in this web address. Mm -hmm. Okay, principal component analysis, PCA, is the most important part of this textbook. Large or higher dimensional data is difficult to analyze. So we need to reduce the, the dimension of data. Uh -huh. It is called uh, the dim uh, uh, dimension reduction. Principal component analysis is one of the most widely used dimension reduction technique. It converts data in high dimensional space into data that can be handled in a low dimensional space while preserving the original data's distribution as much as possible. This is why the PCA is one of the most fundamental and essential part in the study of AI. Uh, in 1974, a Motor Trend magazine published some data that characterize and quantify cars released during the year uh, 1973 to 74. Mm -hmm. uh, given below are some of the data of 11 variables from that publications. Uh -huh. Here is the list of cars, including Mazda and Datsun and Hornet, etc. And here is the, uh, the future of, the, uh, of each car including a mile per gallon and the cylinder and the horsepower and weight of car and the number of gears. Uh, this data can be found on this web address. As we see in this table, a data of each car forms an 11 dimensional vector. Such multidimensional data is difficult to analyze because it is, not, it is not easy to visualize and compute. Therefore, it is necessary to reduce the dimension of data. And this process is called a dimension reduction. It is possible to extract and only use the data of some essential variables. It is called of future selection, but it is possible, uh, it is impossible to know in advance what a close relationship exists between variables. So even if we select and analyze only two features, such as weight and the number of uh, cylinders, we may not be sure that is properly reflect the distribution of the original data. Therefore, 
an analysis of choice of the principal component is necessary to determine which features or elements to be mainly used. This process is called the PCA. In section 2, PCA, we will explain what is the principal component analysis. This PCA is one of the most widely used uh, dimension reduction technique. Basically, PCA converts a data set uh, from a high dimensional space into a simple and easy data set in a low dimensional space while preserving the, dis the distribution of the original data as much as possible. The PCA combines existing variables to find new variables that are not related to each other. Mm -hmm. We call the uh, principal component. The first principal component, PC1, preserves the most uh, original data distribution. Uh, so PC1 axis will maximize the variance of the projection. The second principal component, PC2, preserves the distribution of the next original data as much as possible in the same manner. In the case of 11 dimensional data, the 11 principal components can be created by combining existing variables. For example, let us assume that PC1, PC2, P53 preserves about 90% of distribution or properties of the original data, then uh, we uh, may still uh, perform a rational analysis and capture majority of insight even though 10% of information is lost when we do uh, analysis with only PC1, 2, and 3. So we can simply reduce the dimension of our analysis to 3D data by selecting only PC1, 2, and 3 for the next level of analysis. In this case, it is much easier to compute and visualize, and it allows us to analyze the data without much difficulty. Okay, uh, we have two uh, uh, images here, and to find the principal component, we need to find a new axis, which is called the principal axis or principal direction. The first axis set uh, set the largest dis distribution of data obtained by projecting the original data onto the axis. In fact, this axis, this axis. Below is the picture of the given 2D data, this left one. Orthogonal to the first axis. First axis is here and these are also on a projection. Okay. At this time, the projected data constitute the PC1, this form of PC1 axis. Uh, this data uh, comes from the high school GPA and university GPA data of 105 computer science students are uh, available at the following uh, web address. How to find this new axis. When the data are given, the orthogonal projection should be used to, to find the new axis where the error is relatively small. So we take the first axis whose distribution is the largest, the maximizing the variance of the projection. And we call it PC1, this one, PC1. And we continue to do this for PC2 and PC3, etc., in the same manner. For the second axis, when the original data is projected onto the PC1 axis, the obtained data distribution is the largest after PC1. Again, using the concept of projection, we consider the size of some of the errors, and so on. Then PC1 and PC2 are not related to each other, which means the second axis is not related to the first axis. 
This is the main reason that we studied the ozonal projection and gram schmidt ozonomalization process in uh, the earlier chapter 2. In order to implement the process, a principal component analysis is needed to set the axis so that essential uh, variables are collected as each principal component and that each principal component are not related to each other and are, if possible, linearly independent. It is a concept related to a, a diagonalization of matrices. This is why it is necessary to ensure the orthogonality of a different principal axis. The process of finding axes that are linearly independent of each other with the orthogonalization method, which is used for principal component analysis. Okay. This is why we have learned uh, the part two linear algebra, particularly about the singular value decomposition. The picture on the left below, this one, is a projection of a given data by finding the second axis, the second axis, the green one. And here, the projected data forms PC2. And if we let the first main axis as uh, the x-axis, then second main axis as y-axis, and do the orthogonal projection of the, the data. It will be looked like a picture on the right, like this. The PC1 are on, uh, 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 represented as uh, lead uh, colors, and PC2 axis are shown in the lead, uh, the green uh, colors here. So, the, so from this, we can intuitively understand that the distribution of the orthogonal data along the first principal axis is much larger and longer, and the, 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 the major axis PC1 is clearly larger than the uh, orthogonal uh, minor axis PC2 here, which summarizes the residual legend variance after the variance along PC1 is accounted for. Okay. PC1 axis and PC2 axis, longer and little smaller, and then yeah, we will try to find the PC3 in the same manner. Okay, now in uh, the next section, uh, we will learn how to compute uh, and find the principal component. Okay, let's to analyze the principal component analysis mathematically. Let X be an N by P data matrix. Okay. Suppose N is the number of samples and P is the number of random variables Xi's representing the features of the data. In statistics, in general, we simply use lower case notations. X, uh, little xi's instead of uppercase notations, capital xi's for random variables to distinguish it from the data matrix capital X. So here we will use random variables in a lower case of x as xi's and let's say the ij component x sub ij of data matrix x means one data set for j's random variables xj in the i sample and uh, the, the j's column of the matrix x means all data set of a random variable xj so here x is a data matrix then this uh, Xi's are random variables, and this column, hmm. the first column means all data in Xi, and then second column uh, holds the all data in X2, etc. So we will have 
n by p uh, data matrix. Mm -hmm. Let x tilde be the matrix that is centered. Here, the centering means adjust the mean of the random variable to zero from the data matrix x. So, the mean of the random variables is in any mean centered matrix x tilde are all zero. There are a number of reasons for this. It makes all computations become simple and the analysis become straightforward and easy. Okay. Here is the way of centering. First, define the centered matrix x tilde from the data matrix X. Given a matrix named X, we define a centered matrix X tilde. So uh, the mean of the random variables are all zero. To do this, find averages of each column in X, each random variable. The mean of the random variable XJ is denoted by XJ bar. Here, X one bar is one over n times the addition of x i j s x one one plus x two one da 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 plus uh, da 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 plus x n one yeah? so find the mean and x p bar is a one over p times the sum of the uh, x one p on x two p and x n p Okay, so we, uh, so, so the sum of the entries in the piece column, mm -hmm. we now have the centered uh, matrix X tilde after subtracting the mean of the column from the data for each column of X as following, like this. So uh, from the original data matrix X, if we subtract this matrix, uh, the entries the, in each uh, column are x i, uh, x j bar, like x one bar, x two bar on the second column, x p bar on um, p column. If we subtract it, then then x tilde is defined as this. This, then this x tilde, this centered matrix x tilde is called a mean centered matrix because it is made for that purpose. Okay. The mean is uh, zero. Mm -hmm. From now on, we will assume a given data matrix is simply a mean centered matrix. Already for an easy subsequent analysis why we develop a theory. Okay. We assume x is the same as x tilde, already centered, in the main centered matrix. Then we can find a singular de uh, value decomposition of this mean centered matrix x. So x can be factored as u matrix times this S matrix times uh, V transpose. So X can, we have a singular value decomposition of X as U S V transpose. In here, the S matrix has the singular values um, on the main diagonal matrix and its size is the same as the size of the data matrix uh, n by p. Mm -hmm. So here we have n by n matrix and s is a n by p matrix and this v transpose is a p by p matrix. So if we write this part is s1 then this matrix can be written as this uh, u times uh, this uh, matrix uh, s times v transpose uh, and it can be written 
as this. This was called the uh, the what? So I, uh, you have seen this in the eigen uh, decompose eigen value decomposition. Okay. Uh, so this matrix X, mean centered data matrix X, can be written in this way. Uh, in the uh, since we uh, have used the singular value decomposition. This U matrix and V matrix are their orthogonal matrices, and this S1 is the P by P diagonal matrix, and S1 is a uh -huh, yeah, diagonal matrix like this, and uh, this uh, main diagonal entries are singular values in decreasing order, and are all um, more negative. As the main diagonal component arranged in order of magnitude, okay, because those are the singular values in order. The interesting thing here that only P, the, which is the rank of the matrix X, uh, singular values are greater than zero, and all the rest are zero. Hence, after a multiplication, the result is x can be written as summation uh, from i is equal to 1 to p and si times ui times vi transpose. So x can be written in this way uh, from the singular value decomposition, which means the only, the first p columns of, uh, of u were used and the only, the first p columns of v were used in here to represent x. The singular value decomposition of x, uh, the column vectors of v becomes the principal axis. Okay, here, the column vectors of v becomes the principal axis. Uh, and uh, uh, if the product of u and s is expressed as g, so us, if us is equal to g, then the column vector of G matrix obtained by the original data also on a projection to the principal axis become principal component score, PC scores. Okay. So PC score uh, can be found from this matrix G, which is a product of U and S. After that, uh, SI square over N computed with the singular values SI uh, becomes the variance of I's principal component. Okay. This becomes the I's, uh, the variance of the I's principal component and uh, this SI square over the sum of SI squares becomes the ratio at which the I's principal component preserve the distribution of the original data. Okay. So by computing the proportion that preserve the, the distribution of the original data for each uh, principal component, uh, yeah, we can decide the reduced dimension that we like to use. If we decide the reduced dimension as k, which is much smaller than p from the original dimension P, then we only select the first K column vectors of U to form a matrix UK and the K's leading principal submatrix of S, uh, which we write as SK, then this UK times SK becomes an N by K matrix containing the first K principal component as you see in here. GK is a UK times SK. Here is the first uh, K columns of the matrix U, and this is, is uh, the uh, first uh, K uh, principles of matrix of S. Okay. GK. This GK gives us the principal component. Since since you know 
how to find the singular value decomposition of a given gate mean centered matrix X, you can easily find this GK of your choice of K, which is much smaller than the P, which is the length of the matrix X. Okay, so now you can find the principal component from this matrix GK. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the brief uh, uh, explanation on principal component analysis and how to find the principal component. Here is the open problem. Yeah. Now try to explain how a singular variety composition is used in the principal component analysis and share it in uh, the Blitzen board mm -hmm. QA. Okay, next I will show some examples of principal component analysis. In this section, we introduce one example of principal component analysis using a numerical data set. Specifically, uh, using this data set, we will perform a principal component analysis for the following example. We create an example uh, so that we can check the data implemented with our uh, code, Sage and R. The four item Likert survey with a scale of seven was conducted on 16 people on what people are interested in uh, when choosing a new computer. Okay. One for strongly disagree and seven for strongly agree. Then uh, the first for price, price value, and then software, the compatibility with the user's OS, and design value, and brand value. So we have a four, uh, record, four item record survey of these uh, four categories. And using the data, the price, software, and design, and brand preferences obtained from a survey of 16 people. So a data matrix is formed and the PCA can be conducted uh, using the following code. Okay. The data comes from the following open source here. Okay. That you're gonna use here. This is the data that we got from those record survey. Okay. Then enter the data matrix here, and this matrix. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we make a centered matrix out of this here. This gives us a find the mean and standard deviation. And we use those to find the mean centered matrix X tilde. Then use the singular value decomposition on this centered matrix. Okay. Then we do find the singular value decomposition or on this uh, mean centered matrix, then we will have the orthogonal matrix is U and V and the di diagonal matrix uh, S. Mm -hmm. okay. Then, mm -hmm. and by P diagonal matrix. Okay, then the following code gives uh, us uh, a script plot to show how and then the principal component and also it will give us a PC scores as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the output. So they, they, we generated the data matrix here mm -hmm. 4 by 11 and four, uh -huh. then we, meet, we found the mean centered matrix X tilde here. Then singular value decomposition gave us the U, S, and V. And from there, we found the principal component. And 
this shows the ratio of variances like this. Mm -hmm. Here, what we found was the first two the principal component retain about 85% 85, 85 of the original data variance. So those PC1, PC2 will uh, represent 85% of the whole, uh, the whole uh, features. In this case, the original data was four-dimensional. But even if we reduce it to two-dimensional and analyze it, it also retains, uh, retains about 85% of the original data's property. So in general, they are useful for, for decision-making. It means that we can cut the time of computation in half or at least more than a quarter. We got such a result because we reduced the four-dimension problem to a two-dimension problem. From this simple example, one can easily see the benefit of large dimensional reduction. Okay. For example, if we are able to reduce the data of dimension of a million to a data of dimension a thousand, then we can significantly reduce the amount of economic cost and computing time. Through the use of this theory, and computer programming code, we can immediately analyze uh, the output uh, to make uh, our decision. Okay, for principal component, the eigenvalue below, uh, we can we can see the process of deciding how many principal components to select when we reduce the dimension of data using the following line plot. Eigenvalues are sorted in the order of magnitude from the largest component to component to the left of the elbow point, because these are elbow points. Okay. Usually, where the slope is bent like this. Therefore, even if we lose about 15% of the information, we can reduce the dimension uh, to 2 by selecting only PC1 and PC2. If we look at these figures, we can see uh, one PC1 and PC2 that hold 85% of the information. So we can see it is enough to have uh, two axes to understand about 85% of overall distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, this. So we can choose uh, two principal component or maybe three mm -hmm. from uh, all four of them. I think that shows how the PCA can be done. You can use those code uh, on your data uh, to do this analysis. Okay, here open program two uh, tells us to take a data matrix from source related to your major or your interest, then use the above code to apply PCA algorithm to this matrix, and then post the result of yours on the Q&A board for further discussions. Okay, this discussion and sharing of your output will help you to understand uh, this topic of PCA. Okay, next PCA and covariance matrix. The principal component analysis is a technique 
that converts data from high dimensional space to low dimensional space. However, the information about the distribution of the low data is also contained in a covariance matrix. So PCA maintains a very close relationship with the covariance matrix. This is another reason that motivates us to run the linear algebra. To do PCA, we need to be able to apply singular value decomposition on a covariance matrix. So from now on, we assume that we always start with a mean centered data matrix X and we find a covariance matrix sigma based on a given data. And since this P by P covariance matrix is a symmetric matrix, it is also diagonalizable, which means all of its eigenvalues are real numbers. Okay. These are the things that we, we uh, learn from linear algebra. And now you know, we will use a singular value decomposition uh, on covariance matrix. This the covariance matrix is defined in this way. The sigma is defined, the main diagonal entries are variance of xi's and off-diagonal entries are covariance of xi and xj, okay, like this. Then this can be written as uh, on 1 of n times this xi j matrix and x and x transpose actually. So this, this can be written as this. So, if we multiply these two matrix, then it can be written in this way, which can be seen as 1 over n times x transpose times x. Okay. Here, uh, here is, uh, as you see, mm -hmm. here, so, 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 if you have a centered, mean centered matrix, data matrix X, then you, we can find uh, the covariance matrix by simply by 1 over n times X transpose times X. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is why you have learned the definition of variance and covariance. The goal of the principal component analysis is to find the smallest number of new variables that can preserve the information from the covariance matrix as much as possible. Our goal is to use this method to reduce the length of the matrix in order to find a much simpler size, much simpler than uh, P, which is the length of the matrix X. If this, if this is called the length P reduction or length uh, the dimension reduction. Okay. And the covariance matrix sigma, which is 1 over n times x transpose x, can be expressed with the orthogonal matrix used in singular value decomposition. Uh, as, uh, as we learned, the x can be factors as u times s times p transpose uh, in a singular value decomposition. So if we substitute this x uh, into this sigma, then sigma can be written as 1 over n times this x times x transpose times x. Here, u is a orthogonal matrix, so u transpose x is an identity matrix so this can be written as uh, uh, V times S1 square over N times V transpose. Okay, here, S1 transpose times S1, which will give us S1 square, like this. So, and uh, if we multiply V on, uh, the, on both sides, then sigma V uh, can be written as V times S1 square over M, since V is an orthogonal matrix. So 
So now we have sigma v as this. If we observe this relationship, it is like ax is equal to lambda x, isn't it? Okay, which means the eigenvalue and eigenvector relations. That is, sigma v is equal to v times uh, this means uh, the each columns of v, each columns of v, uh, v i is then sigma v i is equal to this little s i square over n times v i, which means these v i's are eigenvectors and this uh, number is eigenvalues. Here s i are s i are singular values, which is in the uh, s matrix in the singular value decomposition of x. Okay, so here the the si square over n is an eigenvalue lambda i of sigma and the vi is an eigenvector of sigma corresponding to lambda i. This lambda i means the variance of the i's principal component and this vi means the i's principal axis. So singular value decomposition and the eigenvalue and eigenvector uh, concept in linear algebra uh, gives you the uh, variance of i's principal component and the i's principal axis easily. Okay. Here's the open problem. Discuss what you understand on the process of dimension reduction by principal component on the covariance matrix. After you learn and after you read the textbook and discuss what you understand. In the, now we are in the last part. Principal component and linear regression. Okay. Here, linear regression. In linear regression, A and B are determined to minimize the distance between the data, x i, y i, and the computed point xi and yi hat from y is equal to a plus bx. Okay. Uh, that means distance on y-axis here, left axis, left figure shows it. But in PCA, a and b were determined to minimize the perpendicular uh, distance between the data xi and yi and y is equal to a plus bx here, in right figure. That is, the straight line obtained using principal component analysis is closer to the data. The figure below shows the straight line obtained by linear regression and the principal component analysis together. One is the uh, linear regression line and one other is the principal component line. Because the principal component analysis is sensitive to the scale of data, the centering and normalization should be assumed. So those two concepts are very similar. Linear regression and principal component analysis. Okay, discuss what you understand about the similarity and difference between the least square line and uh, linear regression. Those information will help you uh, more about principal component analysis. Okay. Here's my lecture on principal component analysis in Korean. I think that's, that's the end of principal component analysis. Thanks for your attention, and I will leave you uh, this just after uh, your discussion. Okay, thank you for your attention.